over the years, she'd started to home into the person she used to be. And she used to be, without doubt, when you listen to people that knew her as a child, she was good with children. She was trusted. I mean, she used all of that eventually to, 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 uh, to do what she did. But she was good with kids. Um, and as, as time went by and she was introduced to staff and she was... When I first um, went to Cookham, and this is important to mention this, is there was a life as evening going on and Myra had a baby in her arms, a, a young baby, which I thought initially was a bit odd. But it didn't strike me as odd the fact that she was holding the baby so much as the fact the baby was there um, because the, the prison rules were and had no kids under the age of 18. Having said all of that, with me, I'd been given permission all the way through my career to bring my kids into prison at various ages. So I was in this bit of like, well, that's she's having a photo taken as well. That's a bit risky, really. I, nothing happened to that photo, by the way. Apparently it didn't develop. And I believe it because it's never come, never materialised. Why would why is that allowed though? From the biggest child killers in right UK, why is childs allowed in? Well, they shouldn't have been them? basically, but they were. And and the point where it went wrong for me as well was that my this is going back to Grendon again. I'm I, I know we're on the Myra thing, but it's sort of interlinked. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that Grendon traditionally right from the start in the sixties through to. Um, well, even now they have socials, but Grendon used to have wing socials and they used to have charity um, concerts at Christmas where staff and their children could come to the charity carol concerts. They could come and watch the pantomimes. And staff and their children, which included my children, could come to the Christmas parties, which I ran for, oh, I think I ran eight years Christmas parties at Grendon. So for me children coming into a prison to be with amongst child sex offenders and killers and stuff like that has been something that's all was always second nature and to you it's sounding like so yeah yeah i don't Jesus think yeah Christ, i don't think that's you? right that's right. like giving a killer a, a gun or a, a rapist putting him in a fucking a right. room full I of girls what, i tell you what was i'm now able to say was that I don't think the process I followed through that period was any different to anybody else's. But I think because of what happened with me and my daughter, they were right to stop it. Not because my daughter was at any risk, but because that loophole, that, that little uh, bit of what was happening, natural for prisons, had to stop. So... In a way, did I ever feel I'd done wrong by my kids and by my daughter? The answer's no. And if Sophie was here now, she would say the same. That's not the point. People from outside didn't like what had happened. People from outside didn't understand it. My daughter was eight when she was taken into Cook and Wood because she wanted to know where Dad was working on a Sunday. And I said to the governor, you've got this lifers day happening. Are children allowed in? And... She said, well, yeah, I suppose so, but a lot of the staff are not bringing their kids. They're bringing, they used to bring their dogs and horses and stuff in. And I said, well, can Sophie pop down and uh, join in with what's going on? Yeah, she said, of course you can. So that wasn't a problem. So Sophie travelled with me on her own to Cookham and she went into the lifer unit that's down there and she was taken under a wing by the women in the lifer unit, all of whom I knew. I'd known them all for nearly a year. Um... And she enjoyed cooking. She went to the she, she went to the hairdressing salon first, and and just did had her nails done and what have you. And then they took her and she did a bit of cooking. She went and helped out in visits, serving. But in the afternoon, she came up into the admin block where because I'd been to see Myra, and Chris said Myra's got this cardboard globe that she wants to make with Sophie. Is that okay? They can sit and make it while we have a chat. I said yeah, of course you can. So. She sat with my daughter in the governor's office, the side deputy governor's office, making this cardboard globe. Um, and then there was a knock on the door and uh, I think it was a principal officer or somebody there said, Myra's off on her way out and uh, she's wondering if Sophie can go down to the gym. She's going down to use the gym, the trampoline. Uh, and that, we'll have a look through uh, around the grounds on the way through. In actual fact... 
Myra wasn't going with the principal officer. She was going with Nina Wilde, who was her... Um, I didn't know that at that, at that time, but, but who later became her lover. Right. So Nina, who was a criminology student working in Cookham, who had keys, went with Myra and my daughter to play on the trampoline, to go walks in the grounds, to look in the pond at the frogs and tadpoles, and then came back up. Right. Because you've worked with her... It's still pe people looking at it outside, they were going, fuck me, what, man. What's happening? Yeah. But you know... You can understand you know, that, do you know what I mean? So what is the benefits, so, though, for that? What is the benefits for who? There's no benefits uh -huh. other than... I didn't say, OK, look, if anything, I was condemned by David Astor for doing that, for producing the worst negative publicity ever. Did that her. come out in the press, that? Yeah. It, it, years later, though, this is the clever bit. This is what sometimes the media do and I hope you never get into that ball game, is they wait for a period of time and then they make it current. When Sophie went in to meet Myra, she was eight. When it hit the press, she was 13. Okay, she's still a child, but it was five years before. They then brought it out as if I'd done it currently, you know? So everybody's going, what's he doing? It doesn't matter. There's eight and 13. What's the difference, really? There is a bit of difference, but not to make a great deal. But what they did was they immediately went on the attack, attack, attack. I was uh, heralded as the worst um, father in Britain. Um, and basically the mirror went for it. And who could be stupid enough to do this? And it was me. But I, I still, I accepted what I'd done. And I said why I'd done it. And the people that knew me, and we're not just talking professionals, we're talking prisoners that had known me for years, who weren't sex offenders, who were gangsters, who were people who might have also been um, shocked by it. They're not shocked by it. Because my kids came into Grandin, my son, my older boy, when he was, I believe, 15 or 16, and he was going down the wrong track, came in and sat with a couple of lifers in Grandin. You see, know? I don't see that as much of a problem because right. somebody who's maybe done a big robbery, done a murder, but maybe changed their life. And because I know guys who do go around schools and prisons and talk about the younger things that have done, don't go the same route. But for a child killer right. to sit with a kid, it's, it's a totally different ball game.